This is Herculaneum. take a walk through the extraordinarily preserved suburban baths. I mean, this place, you have no idea about ancient Rome, ancient Roman civilizations, until you come to Herculaneum, because so much of it is preserved. So here's what you do as a bather. You'd arrive, hello, how are you doing? And you're ultimately going to be taking off your clothes and going through the baths. In fact, we do that part today. But give you a sense of an area of, of greeting and the start of your path through the different rooms that are gonna relax you, they're gonna allow you to really enjoy life. We're at a spa. We can take a look up as to where we are. A lot of natural light is coming into the suburban baths. Just extraordinary. And as we walk around, we'll see lots of carbonized wood. One of the other great features from Herculaneum is that you have wood preserved from antiquity. Normally, it's not preserved. This wood is carbonized and therefore preserved. And of course, the statuary, the marble. Let's go around here and take a look. So this section right here is very well preserved. Come on right inside here and you'll see this is the Praetornium. This is where you're stoking the fire. And on the other side is the Caldarium, or basically the super hot room, the jacuzzi space, basically. So first we start off, and we're in the Frigidarium. What a grand space, the marble on the floor, this colored marble on the lower half of the wall. Extraordinary is the level of preservation that you have in Herculaneum, sets it apart from anywhere in the rest of the world. Here is our cold plunge pool. So an unheated, an unheated pool, an unheated tub. We can come and soak and talk with your friends, and we can go up and look at the stucco that's also beautifully preserved. And the natural light source above. It's stucco work, and we have lovely paintings. So the history of Herculaneum stopped with the eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD. And this is what's preserved. Walking right through here, we go to so many archaeological sites around the world, and we talk about here's one room, and here's another room, and there was a door. At Herculaneum, you have the door. So we have a carbonized door. We get a sense of just how much wood was in the daily existence, in the life of antiquity, in the life of Roman society. So you're trapping over there the cold space. We're coming in here to places that will be heated. And in this case here, it's a place to pause, maybe contemplate. Maybe to take a breather. It's a kind of a transition room, and you can see these beautiful warriors, stucco figures, just incredible detail that's in this particular room. And if you go up above, above where the, where the stucco and the fresco is preserved, those are tubuli. So those are actually showing us that this room too was heated, and there's heat passing behind the wall and behind the decorations. Over here, we'll be passing through more doors into the tepidarium space where you have a larger pool. You can step right down, and in this pool, this pool is heated. So that's a big bronze uh, container, and the heat is emanating from the container, and it's making the water warm. So here's over the grand space. You can think about the flow of people, and of course, all the walls are decorated. And then when you see it's not intact in some of the walls, you can see these hollow tubes or pipes, which is where the hot air is passing through. So this is a room that's very, very comfortable, particularly in the, uh, 
you know, the summer months, and the winter months, where you're supposed to sweat because it's good for you, it's healthy. I'm going to pass right through here. Through another door. And here we are in the Caldari. It's so hot. I'm sitting here, I'm sweating, I'm wearing little wooden shoes and I don't want to burn my feet. And I can't take this intense heat, so I come over here to this beautiful, beautiful uh, chip little marble uh, basin and the water's flowing out. And I can splash myself with nice fresh water because I'm just sweating so much and I feel awful. But I gotta stay in here because the doctor says this is a good part of the therapy, of this experience in the bath complex going to the cold plunge pools, the warm rooms, and the really hot room like this, and sweat. So I can sit here on this bench, this nice marble bench, looking at the beautiful colored marble floor, talking to my friends about politics, talking about sports, and then maybe I'll jump inside, right inside here, into the heated room. This is the jacuzzi, that's pretty much what it is. And all around this, this beautiful, beautiful stucco. So these are the kinds of extraordinary experiences that you have in Herculaneum. The history becomes vivid, the history is real. There's so much to explore here, and these are the sorts of sites that makes you understand just how incredibly important the site of Herculaneum is. The conservation work that's going on here is extraordinary. There are many, many partners. Getty is involved as well for many years in the preservation of this site. And today, you have an extraordinary opportunity in Malibu to explore part of that history of Herculaneum. And it's just a great thing to recall then that all those wonderful things that you see in the exhibit came from this place, came from a real city located today on the beautiful coastline of Italy. People whose lives brutally ended with the eruption of Vesuvius in AD 79. We're all very fascinated with this fact of destruction in all the cities, Herculaneum, Pompeii, and Savia, that are destroyed. And then to come and see the rediscovered, learn about that in the early 18th century. And then, of course, today, it's a grand site that's very easy to visit. You can take a local train out from uh, Naples. It really is a fascinating, fascinating connection to the past, past lives, a horrific moment in history. Those are the sorts of things that I think really engages, but then it's also a doorway, a portal into understanding this whole society, its contribution uh, to Western civilization, and you just see how complex and sophisticated their lives were. You get a chance to get close to real experiences, real people, and of course, in these sorts of surroundings, it's just amazing because you're literally experiencing it in 3D. You're experiencing it in real color. You're experiencing it with a roof on your head and you have a real door of carbonized wood. So that's why Herculaneum is so extraordinary. And let's go explore more.